36 races since he last went to victory lane, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the winner at Michigan. I think nobody watching this thought that this would be Dale Jr.'s last win in four years. Back in 2008 through 2012, one of the biggest storylines in NASCAR was about the most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr. being on one of the longest winless streaks in NASCAR history. How could a driver who was a championship contender in years past, who was one of the winningest drivers of the previous decade, all of a sudden become a pumpkin, completely turning into a mediocre driver after really setting a scorching pace to start off his career? Career. Well, we're going to look into that a little bit today because I don't think it's as black and white as many like to make it out to be. I think that there's actually a bit of nuance to it and there were plenty of opportunities for this not to happen that for one reason or another just fell through. So let's start out with 2008. He was a championship contender that year. After that Michigan race, his stat line was a win, a pole, 7 top 5s, 11 top 10s, a 10th place average finish, and he was on track to lead about 1,100 laps on the season. He could have also had wins at Phoenix, at Richmond, and the Coke 600. Phoenix, he didn't win because of a lesser fuel strategy. He was taken out towards the end by Kyle Busch at Richmond and had an incident in the 600 that cost him the win there. But he had won the shootout and the dual race that year at Daytona. But some cracks were starting to show. From races 16 to 26, he only had one top five and two top tens and limped into the playoffs. But that's not all that it was seeming to be. Junior still had speed in a lot of races. For instance, at Indy, he was fast, but he had a bad strategy and ultimately, had a flat tire because Tony Erie Jr. kept him out too long. He had a car that could keep up with Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, and Jeff Gordon, the three dominant cars of the day, but because of that early flat, he was stuck behind early. And New Hampshire led tons of laps, was on track for a top 10 finish, got crashed right before the rain came. Watkins Glen, again, a bad strategy with a fast car, ends up finishing in the 20s when he probably should have finished first or second. And at Bristol, he jumped the start, but never could recover from that either. In the chase, it was crash-filled, and he fell back to last in it, 12th. Junior and Tony Erie Jr. were definitely having some issues with chemistry, issues that they hoped to fix going into 2009. To say that the 2009 season for Dale Jr. was a disappointing one would be probably the understatement of that year. And it all started at the Daytona 500, most of it on pit road. He missed his box, he got a penalty for being outside the box while pitting, and was a lap down for much of the middle part of what the scheduled event would have been. But I don't think any other moment defines his 2009 and that 2009 Daytona 500 quite like his incident with Brian Vickers. Make green flag stops prior to that caution. Boy, Brian Vickers, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that ain't gonna work, hard. boys. Vickers hard. Here we go. Kyle Busch, the dominant car of the day in the wall. That was wrong. And 10 cars sliding, slamming into the infield. Jimmy that Johnson, totally uncalled for. Totally. This kicked off an incident, smoke, and crash-filled, mediocre start to 2009. And he hovered around and most of the time under about 15th in the standings. By no means was he out of the chase, but it was clear that this team had taken a step back from the year before. But all of it could be turned around to Talladega. He had one of the dominant cars of the day. The 88 National Guard Chevy was probably one of the two or three that at will could go to the front or push someone with a two-car tandem to the front. And towards the end, he was pushing the 39 ahead of the field. It looked like it was going to be between the Army and National Guard for the win until a young Brad Keselowski pushed Carl Edwards ahead of both of them, and they would fight it out for one of the most famous crashes in recent memory. Junior finished second, and it was pretty much the only highlight he'd have into the summer because it was only getting worse. More crashes, more bad performances capped off by a 40th place run in the Coke 600 where off of speed alone he went multiple laps down. 
This was enough for Rick Hendrick to pull the plug on Tony Erie Jr. and put in interim crew chief Lance McGrew, who would become the full-time crew chief. And to be fair, McGrew actually did do a bit better. And at 2009's second Michigan race, Jr. actually was one of the best cars out there at the end. Due to having a different strategy, he restarted in the middle of the pack, but he was able to charge all the way back up to third. For the first time all season, we junior fans got to see the 88 actually passing cars and being on the attack for the win. Ultimately, he came home third behind Vickers and Gordon, but it was at least one brief moment of happiness in a terrible season, where Hendrick Motorsports went 1, 2, 3, and 25 with Dale Jr. I don't think he was as bad as 25th in points. I think it's just that he had a lot of bad luck and a lot of bad execution on his part as well. But going into 2010, thinking maybe that Lance McGrew and Dale Jr. could get the chemistry up a bit, fans had a little bit of hope that maybe it was just a blip on the radar. And the Daytona 500 did help this a bit bit, or at least the ending masked this feeling. For most of the day, he ran in the middle of the pack because of an ill-handling car, but in one of the green-white checkers at the end of the race, the final one, that is, he restarted around 10th or 12th, and on the last lap, managed to almost make a great comeback to the win. All right, here comes Dale Jr. pushing Cliff Boyer. Where'd Junebug come Just from? This will be the white flag. We're Jamie going. McMurray is in front to try to win the 500. This will be the last lap. Whatever happens now happens, folks. They can all wild up down here, and somebody's going to leave out that second turn to winner. Junior on the bottom with Boyer. Biffle ahead. Truex trying to get up there and help McMurray, but Boyer's right there behind Biffle in the 16. Look at, here goes Boyer to the outside. Look at Junior. Come on, Junior. Come on. Can they make it to the flag? Nah, no way. They'll never get through this third turn. Junior got squirreled up right there. Oh, it's just perfect. He's flying through there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. unbelievably has caught Jamie McMurray as they come to turn four. He'll have to go to the high side, though. McMurray will guard that line. Crash at the back, never mind. Green flag still out. Checkered flag in the air. The 52nd Daytona 500 to Jimmy yes. McMurray. It was a great start, but for most of the regular season, he would run pretty mediocre. Into the summer, though, he was starting to heat up a bit. In June, he scored in the top five of points earned among anyone in the Cup Series. Much of it was due to his competition having just a mediocre June, but still, Junior was getting in top 10 more and even got an 11th place finish at his worst track of Sonoma at the time. But there was a moment that really helped a lot of Junior fans get away from the struggle, and that was the Xfinity win in the three car in honor of his father. That Wrangler three car win at the time was one of the best in recent memory, and for Junior fans, it was a great way to think that there'd be more momentum coming. And he did finish fourth at Daytona the next night and made him 11th in points with eight races left to the chase and which meant he was in the chase at the time. But he suffered a catastrophic collapse going from 11th to 19th in points in only eight races at Richmond and then 21st in the overall points. He led a good amount of Martinsville in the chase and he ran fast before crashing at Talladega. But honestly... He was probably slower on pace in 2010 than he was in 2009, and I honestly think that he performed worse that year. He just had worse luck in 2009. Because of this, change needed to happen. So Rick Hendricks swapped up the teams and drivers, and McGrew was out of the 88 and instead, Steve Letart would be the crew chief. The chemistry between McGrew and Dale Jr. was awful. They bickered on the radio even worse than he did with Tony Erie Jr., and it was clear that McGrew was not cut out to be his crew chief. Jr.'s confidence was at an all-time low as well, which did not help whatsoever in his driving, and Steve Letart needed a fresh start after struggling the last couple years with Jeff Gordon, of all drivers. And Junior started out pretty well, winning the pole 10 years after the death of his father for the Daytona 500. And he had real chances to win as well. He's got to look, he's got to look. He's Can Bush give him room? Yes. No, they oh, touch it. And Here comes Junior Tinder. gets the lead. Oh, that's not going to be. Clear, clear, clear. He's not a happy camper. And 
the crowd goes wild. I was going to say, Kyle Busch may not be a happy camper. About 90,000 people are right now here at Martinsville. And gives him a little gap. Harvick is there. He gets Whoa. underneath, and oh, Junior no. holds him off. No, I don't think so. He's going to oh, take he's him right the here. Position. There it is. He's got him. Junior got loose down here in three and four. Open the door for Harvick. He's not going to give up. Here he comes back. Junior crosses under. He's got the inside. Eases into the corner. Gives, gives Harvick a bump. bump. Dale Earnhardt Jr. out front. Can he make it? White flag. Next flag ends the race. Hamlin trying to close. Track's clear. We're good to go. Seven back. Seven back. Harvick third. Reagan fourth. Logano fifth. What a topsy-turvy finish to the Coca-Cola 600. And Dale Jr. is scooting away. Uh-oh. Uh oh he's slowing, isn't he? 150,000 people on their feet. Junior Earnhardt. is slowing. He's out of fuel. He's, he's out, of out of gas. And as at Indy, the leader at turn four does not get to the flag. Harvick, Harvick, the closer, wins it. After only being beat out by Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf in a fuel mileage race at Kansas, and then a good run at Pocono, he was as high as third in points towards the middle of the season. And while he did stumble a bit down the stretch, he made the chase and finished seventh overall. While the performance slowed, hopes were high heading into 2012 because the 88 was clearly getting faster overall year over year now. And 2012 provided a good bit of fun for junior fans. He started out the season with a second place finish in the 2012 Daytona 500 and led more laps at Las Vegas in race three than he did in all of 2011 combined. He was also part of a potential 1-2-3 finish for Hendrick Motorsports at Martinsville before some incidents and finished second to Kyle Busch at Richmond, his seventh and final second place finish of his streak. And he'd even win the All-Star Open. Off turn number four to win the Sprint Showdown is the Dale Jr. Foundation Chevrolet Dale Earnhardt Jr. At Pocono, he had a car that could win. Unfortunately, though, a poor strategy play got him to an 8th place finish, but at least it also got him to one of the funnier interview moments of his career. We, uh... Can we start over here? Sure. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You ready? So far in the season, while he didn't have a win in 14 starts, he had 5 top 5s and 11 top 10s with an 8th place average finish. And it all led to Michigan, 143 races after his win and four years later after his win. And to be honest, he started pretty poorly. He actually went way to the back of the pack with a nail handling car. And as somebody who was there that day, I thought, oh no, once again, Dale Jr. is going to come up short when I'm at the race. But instead, they made adjustments and he charged up through the pack and by the halfway point, was solidly the leader and the dominant car of the day. And when I say dominant car of the day, I mean he led almost half of the race and nobody could stay with him, especially in the final run, leading to one of the best moments of his career. He sees it right now. There you go, buddy, white flag. Two more miles to victory for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as the crowd stands and cheers here in Michigan. Oh my God, I, I, I wish people at home could be here to see these people in the grandstands and to hear them. We're up here in the TV, TV booth and you can hear these people. Junior down the back straightaway and into turn three for the final time. There is going to be a party in Junior Nation tonight. Three by winning, boy. Hell yeah. <laughs> the streak is over. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to victory lane in Michigan. Thanks. I don't want to say. All was finally right in the world. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the winner at Michigan. And finally, the streak was over. While he would have other streaks in his career, none would match up to just how bad this one was. But he ended up winning, and over the next couple years, had a huge career resurgence that honestly is not very common. But with that, I want to pass this all on to you. What was your favorite Dale Jr. moment? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.